she uh, shows some of her cross stitch tips for parking stitches and um, beginning and ending threads without having to run them under other stitches. And, and then, you know, it's time to take the dog to the bed. So there's that whole ordeal. Anyway, um, enjoy. I've got everything put away, and um, yeah, there's a lot more on my shelf than I thought, so, but that's okay. It, you know, it looks girly and cluttered, and I don't want to dust around it, but for now, we'll, we're going to leave it like that. My sink's clean. My medicine cabinet, hardly anything in there, so now I don't need that second shelf. I'm good. Okay. And then down here. Electrical appliances, hair dryer, curling irons, brushes and hair ties, hair accessories, and then my makeup. So that works out great. Um, oh gosh, I can't remember who it was. Somebody had suggested go get some finials from Lowe's or Home Depot to put on the legs to raise it up. She agreed it would look better raised up. Excellent idea. I've done that before with a steamer trunk that I had. I put um, post top finials on it as legs and made it into a coffee table. So great idea with that. And then over here, I just finally unpacked that footstool that I had, the, the stool for sitting at vanity stool, whatever. Um, unpacked it, categorized everything, put it into boxes, and I actually have empty space on my shelf now. How wonderful. So got that all done so bathroom is done and somebody hung the plate crooked which bothers me but oh well i'll look at that some other time there we go so yeah finials would raise that up so you don't see the hole that's a great idea appreciate that idea thank you very much i didn't quite make it till 3 a.m staying up last night to take Brian to the airport and made it till two and then he woke me up at three took him to the airport came home went to bed and yes I let Jasmine sleep with me <laughs> don't tell him um I've been working on my diamond painting today here's my progress so far so I'm like over halfway done and I just started this a couple days ago. This is that hummingbird from Ever Moment, if I didn't mention it before. Cranking away at that. Um, and let's see. Today, um, I gotta leave soon, take Jazzy to the vet. And yeah, this is the stool I'm talking about that I used to keep all my hair stuff in in the bathroom. I don't know where to put it now. But I like it and I don't want to get rid of it. So, I don't know, maybe in the closet. Who knows? Which reminds me, did he ever get the crossbow out of the closet? Out of the bedroom? I think so. Did he? Yes, good. So, yeah, he got the crossbow out of there. Perfect. All right. Um, well, hello, Jasmine. You're going to go to the vet today. I didn't realize how close we lived to the airport. It's like eight minutes. It's kind of awesome. Um, all right, just quick update. And then uh, later on today, probably put this together from Sweet Tea. And yes, um, she noticed that I had a stand. I bought myself a cheapie. Um, but uh, I think that the one she got me looks like it's so much nicer because it has like different attachments and everything. Anyway, I want the one from T. If anything, I can return the one. Jasmine, I'm talking. I can return the one that I got. However, 
I'm thinking about Frankensteining it so that I can do several things, like have one maybe for laptop and floor stand, or maybe clamp on a table. I don't know, but hers looks better than mine. So if anything, if I decide I don't want them both, I'm returning mine because that looks really cool. It looks much better. All right. Um, okay, you, you done with that? Um, and Vicki, I've been eating lots of strawberry candies. I got wrappers all over the place. Yeah, I know. And I had my teeth rot out. Um, <laughs> I think that's it. That's all I can think of at the moment. Nice burp. Okay. And I, yeah, it was impulse by... I still figure something out with it, but now that I've got my cross stitch into bags, oh, that's what I can show you. Okay. All right. So in here, and I had these already. These are just um, project bags for cross stitch. So I have two whips going for cross stitch, and in here I just have, you know, my floss bags and everything for the beach scene. <clears throat> um, this is one thing I did come up with. I'll show you the one out in the other room. It's easier. But yeah, this was, that's one. Let me put it away because I'm just going to destroy my room again since I cleaned it. Uh, let's see. Um, 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 um. I got to do something with that stuff. <clears throat> Uh, Heck Giver had given me a package of, um, where are they? A package of the little clips for your hair. She gave them to me, intending them to be for Jasmine. Um, for, you know, keeping her hair out of the way when I'm grooming her, but she's short now. Here's what I came up with. So this worked on these cards and the other ones. So what I did... <coughs> was I basically just snaked my floss around and around and around until it was um, creating a rope. And I'm going to have to pause you for a second to put it. Well, no, I'll just show you the other one. There you go. So basically until it spirals around itself. And then I just clipped it to the card to keep it in a little bundle. And then from that if I'm actually putting it away. Then I used the little um, diamond bags from Evermoment that they came in. <clears throat> and I put them into there to keep each card separate and unjumbled. And that worked out great. So that's what I did with those. And then here's my bag for the peacock. Now, let's take a look at the cross stitch itself. All right. So I couldn't talk in the last one because Quinn was snoring on the couch. But this is the first time I've really made it a concerted effort to park my stitches as I'm going. I made it to the top made it all the way across but I just used my label maker created labels and then if they didn't have a symbol I used a sharpie and it didn't work very well but we all can you know figure out different ways of doing labels I started with the post-it notes and because I have a q-snap I just stick them to the plastic but when I'm done with a color I just park it on the side and put the matching label next to it. Um, the labels, because I act, I silly me, those card holders back there, the DMC card holders, I stuck it to the actual paper cardboard part and it got onto the sticker, pulled it off. So new ones, but yeah, it seems to be working pretty good and I keep moving them wherever they are out of my way. The other thing that I've started doing that I saw from another channel, and I apologize, I don't remember what channel it was. Let me tighten this up so it doesn't flop on me. 
I was one who would always, um, come on, there we go. I would flip my work over and run my stitches underneath the ones on the back side, beginning and ending. Well, I saw people saying different ways of doing it without having to ever flip it over. Well, awesome. So here, this is this color ended. So I just ran it under where it's going to get covered up, pulled it up through the front, cut it off, and I leave it there. And then once I stitch over that, when I get close to it, I just snip it off real close to the fabric, pull it down through, you know, just grab it with a needle and just kind of pull it so it comes out, and stitch over it. And then I don't have to flip my work over. I do the same thing for starting a new thread. So let me find one where I've started one. Um, let's see. Well, I suppose these here. So maybe not. I don't know. But anyway, I start somewhere where I'm heading in that direction and I put the thread in down through the bottom and then I'll run it maybe an inch and then up to where I'm going to start. And I just leave about, you know, a half inch tail or whatever. I begin sewing and once I get to the point where I feel like, you know, I've covered an inch, half inch of it or whatever, then I snip it off, pull the tail through, and it's secured so that I don't have to flip my work over at all so far, which is awesome, especially when you're working on a frame where you're really close to your, your frame. It's hard as heck to run your needle underneath that stuff when you're right up against like the Q-snap plastic. When you're in the middle, it's not such a big deal. But it eliminates you having to flip your work over and over and over and over again, especially if you're putting your pattern on. Um, I use the needle minder to hold my pattern in here. And then I, because I'm going all the way across with my photocopies, um, this is the right hand half, so from here to about here. And this is the left hand half from here to here. I said that backward, left hand, right hand, you get what I'm saying. And then I'm only showing like the top 10, 15 um, boxes. And again, I'm only showing part of the pattern. You can't see the whole thing. You're not gonna be able to do this. Um, and then I just use a highlighter to cover where I've gone so that I can see, you know, the left side and the right side. And then as I go, I'll just flip these over again and again. Now, if I'd used the original, probably could have fit the whole thing, but my eyesight sucks so bad that I can't see the grid very well, plus it's way smaller than my highlighter. So I blow it up to, I think I did 175% on this one. Essentially what I did was I used the photocopier and I kept playing with the zoom until I could get one um, quarter from the center to the edge on one sheet of paper. So I just kept playing with it till I got the right size that I could fit it all on one piece of paper. But yeah, that's what I'm gonna do until I get down to, you know, here, and then I'll, I've got it folded, I'll flip it over and do maybe the next 10 or 20 stitches and keep going and work my way down the, the um, project. So that's what I've been doing with the parking of the stitches, just little um, sticker maker, and if they get to the point where they don't stick anymore, you know, I'll just make a new one. Or I could use the sticker maker that uh, Michelle had sent to me. I think, yeah, the sticker maker that was given to me. Um, and use the actual chart to make a photocopy of it and do that. But uh, I also have these on here. These are half stitches so that I, I know which ones are full cross stitch and which are half, which, again, if you don't remember the difference between those, let me grab something here. Okay, so let me zoom in so you can see. Come on. Why? Why do you have to do this to me? Come on. It doesn't. All right. Okay, I ran out of room on my camera. I deleted a bunch of stuff, but whatever. 
I figured out the autofocus thing. So I had it on video stabilization mode, which then meant I couldn't autofocus. So now when I do this, it should focus in. Come on. Is it working? Looks like it's working. Here, focus over here. Kind of, it's better, all right. So back to this. Um, when your stitch, oh, it's not enough light in here. When your stitch is running in one, in for me, because my top stitch always goes from, here, we can see better over here. My top stitch always runs diagonal, bottom right, top left. So then when I see a stitch that is running the opposite way, then I know that that is a half stitch without having to really get down in there like we're trying to right now, but my camera won't cooperate. Um, maybe if I do this, get a little more light. There we go. So with that, uh, you can tell more easily which ones are full and half when you're blind as a bat. Okay. So that is why on my stickers, I put the little half symbol so I know by the color without having used it just recently and trying to figure out where it traces back to whether it's a full stitch or a half stitch. So that's what I do with my stickers because I've got four colors that are half stitches on this particular project. So that's what I'm doing right now with my little testing of my parking stitches and how to keep everything straight. Um, as I fine tune this and figure out easier ways I will keep you updated as to what I've discovered, but right now with the stickers, as they lose their stickiness, I will, um, you know, make new ones or whatever, or find something that works really good. I don't know if that sticker maker that I have with the removable stickers, it depends. We'll just see. We'll just see. Or I might put something on the board. I don't know. We're going to figure something out. But yeah, that's my progress so far. And I'm enjoying the whole parking stitches because I hate threading needles. Um, but yeah, okay, now, um, let's see. With that cutting out, I don't know how much rambling I did that I missed, but um, yeah, I love the needle minders so cool you just you know plop it down and it stays there i found that it even holds my little sewing scissors kind of awesome i did lose the back of one last night it's somewhere in that chair under the chair over in the blanket by the dog i don't know i'll have to find it it's somewhere it didn't leave the apartment essentially is what i'm i'm getting at but um gotta find that magnet but yeah love that and um yeah, so I'm excited to keep going on this, and um, it's probably one of the easiest, most convenient um, projects I've done because I've always had like the needle cards all over my chair and couch and all over that place, and and you know my husband's a, a neat freak, so I have to put it away every single day, but. Yeah, we're going to try out T's stand and see if it works out better than this one. But um, either way, that's the one that I want. Because it's sentimental like that. I'd rather have something gift from a friend than something I bought for myself. So I need to get going soon. Got to take her to the vet. We might do a car ride. I don't know. Um, but yeah, Brian is gone f for close to a week. And I'm going to just kind of... Let loose. His parting words were, the house is going to be clean when I get home, right? <laughs> You're going to make sure you don't park my car close to other cars so I get door dings, right? Oh my gosh. Yes, Dad. It'll be fine, Dad. All right. But, yeah. I'm not going to make the bed for a week. Okay. Got to go. Got to get ready to take the dog and finish cleaning this stuff up. And then we'll figure out what we're going to do for the rest of the day. Because, yeah. My only day off between now and when I gotta go pick him up from the airport again next week. 
So, yeah, I've got to get to the vet in an hour. Okay, bye guys. All right, we're just leaving the vet, and uh, <clears throat> Little Miss Princess just cost me $171. That's not including the meds. Anyway, um, we are going to go to Petco, Pet Smart, Pet something, some pet store. As long as I've got her with me, because... Um, Full of recommendations uh, for her um, for her fear excuse me of the thunder thunder vest again and I thought it was just the snugness of the vest is what the the um here let me get rid of the air conditioner it's probably loud um, I thought the snugness of the vest was the whole idea behind it, but apparently there's more to it than that. It's the actual fabric that the vest is made out of helps with the electrical charge that the animals feel when there's thunder outside. Makes sense. Um, so we're going to go get her a thunder vest, depending on how much it costs. Um, for her anxiety, because she, you know, she licks her paws for the anxiety. Because um, we talked about her bad behavior with other dogs and her anxiety when you know we leave the house and all that other stuff. That she's just a basket case, and they could see that just by her behavior in there. Um, they offer, they suggested three different things for that. First one being dun dun dun, um, Soliquin Calming Supplement. It's a treat. Only available through the vets. Take it once a day. Uh, Adaptal Collar. It's a pheromone. Available at the vet online at many pet stores. Stick with the name brand. Change it every 30 days. It gives off a pheromone like nursing mother dogs to the puppies to calm them. Um, calming care probiotic available through the vet only. Add to the food once a day and a thunder shirt. Um, don't keep it on them all the time. Use it at times of noise such as thunderstorms, fireworks. She said one of the dogs that they have hates getting its toenails clipped so they bring their dog in wearing its thunder shirt. They also recommended um, training for her. Um, they said don't torture her by taking her to the dog park unless it's empty because she clearly has some anxiety issues with that but they wanted me to take her to a behavior training class not one in a pet store because they're not the greatest private training group setting I don't have money for or time for that so anyway those were their recommendations on what to do for Jasmine. So what I can do, I can get her a thunder vest, depending on what it costs. And they also told me that she needs to have her teeth cleaned. And I said, well, how much is that? $345 plus another 100 for the lab on the blood work. Okay, 400 and. $445 to have the dog's teeth cleaned. All right. I know things are different now than they used to be, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago with our animals or family members now and all of this other stuff. But I have never had my dog go in for a teeth cleaning where they have to put them under and all of that. And I'm like, well, how often does she need this done? And the answer is, is, well, it depends on the dog. So she didn't even tell me six months, a year, whatever. But she kind of insinuated like once a year. I am not going to be spending $450 
once a year for her teeth to be cleaned, plus another 171 for her regular checkup. So that's like, yeah, 450, 6, 6, 30. And then she didn't get all of her shots today. So those are, you know, probably another 700 bucks a year for vet bills. That's like ridiculous. What are you doing? Just calm down. Yeah, that's like, no wonder people get that pet insurance for their medical care because it's like a hundred bucks a month by the time they squeeze every dime out of you. I don't even spend that on my own health care. Oh, and then you get the meds too. Don't forget the meds because that's another couple hundred bucks. Yeah, it's it's like a hundred dollars a month plus the food. Which doesn't cost much for her. That's like, what, ten bucks a month maybe? Still. So expensive. Anyway. Yeah, so we'll go check out the pet store, see if we can get her a thunder vest. And I'm going to stop the video so I can turn the air on high because she's panting like, like a whore after church. We went to Petco, got a thunder vest. It was expensive, so I'm going to check Chewy when I get home because i got to order her meds, see if it's less there and return it. And I got her some uh, toys, the big bin in the front, two for five dollars, and some rawhide shoe things to try and give her something to release a little anxiety. But I don't know. We'll see how it all goes. But uh, all about her today, I guess. Except that I am going to be on the lookout for a uh, Mickey D's on my way home. I want McDonald's, courtesy of my dear friend Jennifer Roberts, who sent me some some uh, Happy Meal mail. So I am going to get myself some McDonald's for dinner tonight and treat myself. And I did get word Brian's plane landed. He's there. He's fine. He's good. And he already misses me. Isn't that just such a sweetheart? So, um, yeah, that's, that's... In two miles, take exit four toward Willow Avenue. Okay. Um, but yeah. Here's, uh, Tampa. Tampa, Tampa Skyline. <laughs> Not the, not the most impressive thing, I suppose, but... Alright. I believe it said exit 4.
not going to try and get over. I also don't want to try and keep the car with the dog and driving with him and driving where I have no idea where I am. I'd rather take it home and keep it. And I don't want it cold. It's fries and girls cold. Gotta have fries. My little thumbnail of the GPS is not showing now. It makes me nervous. I don't know where I'm going. I might have to stop this so I know where I'm going. Because <laughs> I have no map. I checked the map. It's pretty easy from here on out. Jasmine's exhausted. All oh, the anxiety. In one and a half miles, take exit to A for Florida 60 West toward Clearwater. for Florida 60 West toward Clearwater. It's Vicky. Don't make eye contact. Can I can I trust you not on the leash for like one minute? Come on. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Jasmine, let's go. Let's go in the house. No treat? I got a whole bag of treats. Come on. Let's go. Come on. All right. Okay, let's go. For Brian. Well, that's no fun.
We made it. No McDonald's. Away and this is garbage. And this is <gasps> oh, it feels like I need to use some glasses and some more garbage. All right, let's see what we got for you. I got you something, Jazz. What is that? <laughs> Hold on, let me pull the tags off. There you go. Okay. It's a little monkey. Ow. Let me get something to eat. I got her some raw hides. And then this is the Thunder shirt I got her, but it was $40. So I'm going to check online, see if we can find it for less. And I got her a little squeaky bone. Yep. Okay, I'm going to make food now. All right. Well, I hope that was somewhat informative and maybe a little entertaining. Anyway, um, more videos coming up later on this week. She's got all kinds of time to work on stuff, so it's it's been great. And we'll see you soon. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like it and want to see more. Okay. Bye now. Hello and welcome to the Mental Health Hotline. If you are obsessive compulsive, press one repeatedly. If you are codependent, ask someone to press two for you. If you have multiple personalities, press three, four, five, and six. If you are paranoid, we know what you are and what you want. Stay on the line and we'll trace your call. If you're delusional, press seven and your call will be transferred to the mothership. If you are schizophrenic, listen carefully and a small voice will tell you which number to press. If you are depressive, it doesn't matter which number you press, no one will answer you. 